bricks the most interesting subjects on the planet? Not really, but there you go. Anyway, point in today, um, which means I've got to rake out all this really nasty concrete on a lime mortar building, which makes things very, very annoying, very, very difficult. Now, there's only one real way to do it, but I'm going to check to see if the mortar rake that I bought for the grinder will actually go through this or at least shake it loose because it's always worth a try. Uh, it depends how bad it is. There are places which are going to be like concrete and there are places which are going to be absolutely impossible to get out and then you have to revert to a concrete grinding disc um, diamond blade basically to um, slot it so that you can vibrate the either side loose because the compression on it after so many years is, is often bad. The nice thing about this wall is that they've literally just tickled the surface with a bit of mortar so um, it shouldn't be too difficult but it is going to be a long boring job. Right whenever you're doing this, this is a mortar rake by the way, um, goggles always okay. Um, I would use respiratory stuff for this but I haven't got it with me so I'm only showing you how to do this dust mask definitely this lime water is so bad for your lungs believe me I've done it many many years and I really don't know how to breathe anymore so you know goggles dust mask hat it's a must come on if you want gravel in your hair for days even after showering don't wear a hat see if I can so a little bit of bed, lime mortar here, I'm going to grind and then I'm going to try and grind this stuff from underneath and see if I can pop it off and we'll see how it goes. There we go. Not fun, don't breathe. Yeah. Um, two bricks uncovered, that's how long that took. It does take a while to get through this stuff. So I'm gonna try the, the disc on it and see if I can shake it loose a little bit quicker with a slot down the middle of the mortar line. And still using the rake because the rake is gonna expire far sooner than it should if I you know, don't make some room for some rattle. Um, or we're gonna end up with um, massive amounts of tool costs each one of those rakes costs 10 pounds roughly it's about 9.95 uh, again tool station always good um and uh blah, 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 where am i oh yeah the other thing is if you want to reverse a brick in a wall uh, you can get long ones which is always helpful um these are uh pretty much you plunge in slowly and then go around your brick and then you can pull your brick out, remortar it, swap them round if you need to because there are bricks that you can see, uh, that's difficult to do on camera, um, bricks like that where they're end on and they're unfortunately if this is sort of some sort of weird hybrid Flemish bond idea that someone's come up with they bridge between two lots of bricks, you're going to find that very difficult to get out, but you can uh, grind around it, so go around the end of the brick and snap the brick with a bit of leverage, but don't grind anywhere around this brick, this brick, or these bricks, because you'll break them too. <laughs> you need them to be up against something. Now, uh, if you're using Fabrician Red Bricks, which these are pretty much, um, in places because they're, they're a mix and match of everything. This this house has been um, mucked around an awful lot anyway. Um, 
hence the reason why I'm not fussed about the uh, cement on top of the lime mortar because this wall is already bent. There's not a lot I can do about that, but I'm going to get in at least an inch to repoint, unlike these Burks who have put it in there and it's about 5 mil thick on the top of lime mortar, which is never going to stick to. It actually needs to be compressed in between tips of bricks, otherwise it's just going to fall out again. So, uh, right. I'm going to do the best I can with it. Um, that's all you can do because I really don't want to disassemble this wall and put it back together because unfortunately our Faversham red brick field is closed now so we can't get them anymore which is really helpful. It's the only place that used to sell them but because all these not very good builders have been around and replacing them with things like uh, engineering bricks which are a completely different density, weight and um, what's the word? Flexibility. They've pretty much naffed up every building in Kent, so all I can do is replace like for like. The rest of the house is also cement, and if I do this one in lime and the rest of the house in cement, it will look absolutely terrible. Plus, if this ever does come down and needs to be rebuilt, it will be rebuilt with um, cement because we're in halfway up at the top of the hill of, uh, in, in Borham, and this is not a listed building. And if I take you through Barham at some point, which I probably will do on a video, and point out some really lovely new designed houses, which look like office blocks in the middle of a really old town, um, you'll discover that the, the lack of listings in this town, which is criminal, <laughs> um, is, is dreadful. It, it's just, yeah. Some people down this road have built some quite nice old property looking places, but the, on the whole, they do and, and disgusting. I'm going to slot with a grinding thingy. Ping! Grinding thingy. Right, this diamond edged has slots in it. Don't get one without slots in it unless it's a really high class one and it's got ribs around the outside of it because the material stays in the wall. It gets tighter and tighter and your grinder will burn out before you know it. Air gaps. It's good for cooling, it's good for material removal, especially when you're working with concrete and lime. It gets a little awkward. Right. Here we go. I'm going to grind away from my camera. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> The, um, the rate of which it peels off once you've got the uh, uh, compression out of the joint is a lot faster than if you try and actually grind through it sideways because you're, you're trying to grind through cement and it's not good. That wheel, um, because it's removing the material at such a rate, it is just, it's so fast. Uh, you can slot the uprights as well, but I didn't because I wanted to show you how long it takes to get through a piece of um, solid mortar as opposed to um, the slider one that I put down there because it's uh, it's loose and free and by the time you get a little way along it you've rattled it off the brick. It's kind of like a, a vibration impact hammer job but mini um, and the nice thing is because it's rattling it off the bricks you're not smashing the hell out of the bricks and it's, it's creating an easy path for you so release the compression and grind. Meanwhile, I'm going to go back to the other one, slot the entire wall up, and then do it all again with this. The most monotonous job on the planet. Uh, it's a bit. It's not going to be fun. Alright, this is uh, a two foot wide by four foot tall section that I've just ground out. And we'll get there. 
when we get there, this is not a job to be rushed. Okay. Now, if you find this, you've gone too deep on your perpendiculars with a round blade. My mistake. Try not to do that. It's really difficult to cover up. Um, right, these are beds. Beds and perpendiculars. Interesting, huh? Anyway, get down here and then we start running into the bit that I'm done. But yeah, as you can tell, there are brick replacements all over this thing. These are lice, these are not. We don't like these, but that's what we've got. And I can't really take those out because they're full brick replacements. They go all the way through. But I do like the old, uh, I like these. You know, they've got a nice bit of character in the modern bricks. Like that, just characterless. And when you find a house built entirely out of them, you may as well just have rendered the outside of the building. There's absolutely no point. I like the old bricks. I have got a little archway in there from an old window that someone's filled in. Uh, which is a shame because uh, the little old windows like that and they're usually uh, half height um, sash windows. Uh, a nice little wooden window on the side of the building. There's one at the other end as well, which is now almost a drive level where we've raised a drive. So it's always fun. Anyway, there's a not quite on yet because I knew the point was coming. It's just to retain the gate um, for now. I'll we'll get that sorted out once I've got the point in finished. And then, uh, yeah. Oh, fun job. Anyway, that's raked out with the mortar rake. Yeah. Let me show you the depth on that, it's all a little fuzzy in the joins, nothing to focus on. Anyway, so, raked out with the disc in order to wobble loose with the rake. Makeshift dust mask, old t-shirt. If you're wondering what the funny noise is, that's chickens. There we go.
whenever you're doing work like this, it's best to work in a small area, um, designate yourself what you're happy with doing, making sure that you don't get totally bored and run off your feet trying to catch up with everything on this area. Um, you want to be able to keep it not huge, but doable within like an hour or an hour or two, um, making sure you're not like brick blind by the end of it, and trying to find little tiny specks of dirt in between bricks and stuff like that, so keep it small. Detail your work as you go along and make sure that you're um, finishing what you've done before you move on to the next bit and then that way you don't have to check an entirety of the wall, you know that area is finished and it's complete. Move on to the next part, do the same and methodically work through what you're doing and then everything should work out pretty good at the end and it won't be really annoying with what you've done. And when you get to pointing, you won't have bits of stuff laying around that's just Reading it again in your nose. When you come to finish this off and you've still got dust everywhere, sweep up what you've got done, get it into bags, whatever contained, get it out of the way, and then hose down the wall, or you'll end up with slush that you have no way of dealing with at the end of it. Make sure you tidy up before you get it all wet, because you're going to blast a fair amount out of the wall anyway. Um, and you need it dust free, otherwise, your next set of mortar, or lime mortar, or whatever you're going to use isn't going to stick properly, it's just going to roll off the surface. Good. Lime especially absolutely hates trying to stick to anything, um, especially if it's old, it gets very very dusty and everything rolls off of it, including water, which is fun until you get the dust gone and then it will start soaking in properly, which you need to do before you start pointing. I will get to that when we get that far, which is probably going to be tomorrow. This next section is hydraulic lime, which is slightly different to the stuff that we used to build it, uh, which was just being lime putty and the same mix. So I'm going to rake this out without having to slice it, so I'm going to be a bit quicker. inspection of the wall. Um, pretty much most of this is separated from the brickwork so we're gonna um, just grind out layers at a time. We're gonna take about three rows of bricks at a time, grind it out and then um, rake it out and then go up a three and just keep going. And there's a wire up there. Um, we're gonna stop around about there today. Just get it raked out and then we're gonna have a 
tidy up and a blast off with some mortar and um, I'll show you what you pull out the wall with the lime mortar and when to stop. Back day two, pointing is pretty cool. Grinding out at the moment still. Had to go and buy some more grinding bits yesterday, it ended up being the end of the day. So, you know, lost a bit of money on the, on the earning front, but we carry on. Ah, I'm down there at the moment, so I'm just going to readjust.
Okay, so that's my day over. My grinder just packed up. It happens.